me today. Um, I am really excited that this is a beautiful place to This is my first live listening and learning show with real people, not just folks. And I want to say something really important is that as the superintendent, I as well continue to have events like this because although I started virtual, I have learned so much from listening and learning and receiving questions from the community. So I want to start tonight by saying there is nothing that you can ask that you can't ask me. Because I am here to grow and learn as your superintendent. Um, I work in service of all of you, and my job is to make our schools the best place they can be for our children and our community. Um, that being said, one of the best schools in our district for our children and our community is ES-165 under the leadership of Ms. Keeley. Thank you so much. And I want to thank Ms. Keeley and her staff for allowing me to be here tonight to meet with all of you um, in the community. And we are also live streaming. Hello, everyone. Um, for those of you who are um, online listening, Lewis will show you, and actually I'll have something on the screen here that will allow you to provide me with feedback from tonight's event. But I also want to welcome the community back, and there will be other places that I will be across the district. Tomorrow I'm going to be in College Point. And I invite people to come and meet with me live um, to do the same thing that we're doing here tonight, which is to ask questions. Um, so, let me just make sure I'm clicking, right? I think it's really important. Am I blocking it, Lewis? Just let me know. Okay. I think it's really important that you guys know that we are available to you 24 7. And here is the way that anyone in the district can contact us. You can always call, text, or leave a voicemail to 347-850-3048. That um, phone number is controlled by Louis Lotito, my chief of staff, and he answers as long as he is awake, even on the weekends. So if there are any concerns, you can always contact us. You can email us at contact at d25.nyc, visit our website, which is listed above, or you can always message us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So I want to begin by saying, has anybody, uh, everybody seen this, right? This is our strong, strong school vision. This vision statement and vision image was created by parents, parent leaders, teachers, students, administrators, working with my office um, to really discuss what our core values are, what we believe in as a district. We are always working to revise this vision and get feedback. The roots of this tree represent all of our schools. The, the, the saying from many roots growing as one community really has multiple meaning. It talks about how we believe as a, a community of school in District 25 that we grow and learn from each other and our experiences, um, but we also grow from the cultures of our communities. We think that makes us stronger and smarter and better as individuals and human beings in the world, that we come from many different places. Queens, and especially District 25, is one of the most diverse communities, and we love and respect and value all that that has to offer to all of us as a, as a learning community. We believe in empowering all of our learners to make decisions at every school that I visit. I spend time not only speaking with children in classrooms, but I also set aside time to meet with them, to talk about what they're learning, the impact that it's having on them, and if they have any suggestions and recommendations for me as to how we can make their school experience better. We focus on embracing differences from different perspectives. Once again, it makes us smarter to know things about one another and different things happening around our world, world from different perspectives and providing access and opportunity for all of our students and our um, community, as well as our teachers and staff members in terms of their learning. This is our mission statement. I spoke about our strong, strong school vision, how we we believe in strong professional learning, but spend some time talking about the professional learning that we're offering to our teachers to, uh, throughout this year. Um, if any of you here are teachers in District 25, just know that Friday from 4 to 5 o'clock is my teacher time. 
Um, the link is on the website that you will see, and I will be speaking specifically with teachers to ask any questions, and you can make any comments on um, anything that we've been, talk we've been talking about this year in terms of our growth. Um, so I want to say we started off strong. Our schools across District 25 successfully opened their schools. For those of you who see, this is Miss Neely in the bottom left-hand corner. I love talking about her first because I could not believe how many kids wanted to hug and love her. Um, and it is because I know that she missed everyone. It's all she talked about um, during the summer when we, so I saw her and they were so excited to be back for students and, and she was so excited to welcome them back. Um, also, you see up um, in the upper left hand corner, there's Bell Academy in 169. They were really great. They had an ice cream truck come and welcome kids back really early in the morning. That was great. They're all shipping up and ready to go. So we love that. <laughs> um, so we successfully opened our doors in every single one of our schools with no problem. And that is because of our opinion and also because of our teachers. I know, and I said this all the time, this is going to be the best year yet as we emerge from this pandemic and that terrible time that we have gone through over the past two years. But it's just a feeling, that old District 25 feeling of wanting to be with each other, wanting to grow and work together, and wanting to work in service of our students. And I'm really excited about that. And I feel our chancellor, our deputy chancellors, as well as our controller, so that in District 25 too, because they wanted to come and visit our school. So last week we had, and the week before we had um, visits from all three. Um, Louis, can you do that or not? To welcome our, our new team. So um, I am there, you can get up there and do that. Okay. So I'm really excited. This is also on our website to show you our new team and access that the community has to resources in ways we never had before. So everybody looks amazing in this website, except for me, just so you know, I'm definitely changing this picture. I just haven't had any time to do it. Um, Lewis took amazing pictures of everyone but me. So um, if you go on out to our website, which we showed before, you will see all of our team members and the services that they provide to both our schools and our communities. And just so you know, under each and every person's name is their email address, and they are expecting to hear from you. So I am the community superintendent, and for those who don't know me, Dr. D'Antona, who is here tonight, we love him. He is our deputy superintendent. <laughs> Beverly Mitchell, um, who had another engagement tonight. She is our executive director of school supports and operations. She controls facilities, student services, and also our leadership pipeline. Louis Latito, our field support liaison, he runs everything. <laughs> um, Debbie Winkler is our teacher development and evaluation coach. She trains um, administrators on supporting and evaluating teachers using the Danielson framework. Then we have instructional leads who provide professional learning to all of our schools for the first time. That District 25 has staff that provides support only to us based on the needs of us and i'm very excited about that so supporting us is anna arrigo angelique hewitt and melinda willens we also have diana stein who is an instructional lead for health and wellness and making sure that we are in compliance with physical education from k to eight we have two intervention specialists who are supporting our schools with mtss that's Arifa khan and danielle berkman Tracy Vaughn is our academic policy and performance specialist. She keeps us in compliance on programming, ensuring that our special needs students who have IEPs are, um, are getting the services they need, as well as our new language learners, making sure they are scheduled for their appropriate services. Nate Yakubov is the administrator of special education. He lives in this neighborhood. He is also amazing and very responsive. And we know that our families um, with IEPs have had a lot of difficulty in the past getting in touch with somebody who can help them district specific. Nathan is here and has been working hard since he started August 1st. There is an email, lift it up a little bit. I know he's probably watching this and going, oh. but <laughs> um, please feel free to reach out to him. He is extremely responsive. Richard Braun support, supports us with L compliance and performance. 
Wei Yi Chung is our uh, district social worker who supports schools um, in all areas of emotional learning, mental health, and wellness support. She also connects our schools to community based organizations and resources that we can do further outreach for our students and families. Esther Baluto, did I somebody? Oh, okay, yes, oh, yes, oh, so that's that. Uh, actually, I'll ask it right now. If there is anyone who needs translation in Spanish, Mandarin, and Pashto, um, raise your hand and I'll, I'll call each language. So, first um, is Pashto. Does anybody need translation in Pashto? Mandarin? Spanish? Okay, if I'm talking too fast, also let me know. I have a Little problem with that. Okay. <laughs> um, Esther Maluto, where is Esther? Esther is our family support coordinator. For those of you who know her, she is the main point of contact for families. Here's what I say to parents all the time when parents are upset and they're angry and they call the district office and they say, I want to speak to the superintendent, please know when you speak to Esther, you are speaking to me because no matter where I am in this district, she is calling me and telling me your issue and will not get off the phone with me until she has an answer for you. So please know that. Um, Esther speaks Spanish. We also have um, Mandarin translation in our uh, office as well for families who may need that. We have Marissa Martin. Where is Marissa? Here is Marissa. <laughs> Marissa is my community coordinator. You need to meet Mr. Lemma, just so you know he's a very important man here. This is his favorite school. He represents many schools. Um, but Marissa works very hard as the point of contact with our local community-based organizations, all of our local elected officials, and she also manages our digital communication and social media platform. So we welcome her herself. She is the one that helps with those who put together my listening and learning work. And then Janet Ayala Cajo, who is my administrative assistant, she's the one who answers the phone when you guys call and will transfer you to us. I'm just going to say next slide, but I forgot I had to turn it. Oh, wait. Okay, can I go now? Yep. Okay. So, tonight, um, when you first came in, they distributed my 90 day plan. The 90 day plan really represents the work that we are focusing on this year, it also represents our beliefs and core values. I'm not going to spend um, time going over that. There is opportunity for you to read it tonight here, but also online. And you can give me comments, which you will see at the end of the presentation. But what I really want is to go through this and have you answer any questions that you have about the work that we're doing in the district. But then the rest of the time is for you to ask me questions, um, to make statements, to talk to me about things that you think are going well things that we can do better, that we need to focus on, and any advice you have for me um, in terms of the work that I do across the community. So our 90-day plan focuses on our vision of excellence, of supporting equity and diversity, wellness and safety for our students, and empowering our learners. Uh, we believe in rigorous instruction and opportunities for our students to be the best that they can be. We support excellence. But as we are emerging from this pandemic, we are also placing a priority on wellness and safety. We know that many of our students are having a difficult time returning to school, and we want you to know that there are resources and have been trained for our staff in ways to support that. My daughter, who is 17, um, got her first job this summer at a summer camp. I was really excited because she's gone a whole day um, and slept really well. Um, but one of the things that she said when she came home, she worked with um, kindergartners and third graders, and she said, Mom, this is the first time that I'm seeing results from the pandemic. She said, kids don't know how to play. They don't know what's going on. Um, they don't know how to be nice to each other. They're not used to that. They were in like, their own little bubble. And she said, I'm really happy to have had an opportunity to be there with them, to show them that. Because I remember when I was that age, all of the things that I learned. I said, yeah, maybe you'll be a teacher, but I will hire you. But you would be a teacher. 
<laughs> okay. Um, my listening and learning tour. If you want to know where I am, you can always look up www.p25.nyc backslash events. If you look up tonight, you'll see that I'm here with the wonderful people. Um, so one of the things that we've been talking about a lot is not just our strong, strong schools, but returning back to school, being strong, right? Getting right to work, supporting our students in the best way we can, both socially and emotionally and academically. Going back to the amazing thing that I see so many of your teachers here tonight is feeling, going back to the amazing work that we have done for our students pre-pandemic. And for those of you who are here tonight, um, that are educated, clap your hands because we are ready for that, right? We want to be there and do that for our living. And here's the way we're doing it, right? We're looking at data because we think it's important for us to understand the learning needs of our students. So we're looking at um, our assessments that we gave, such as iReady. We're looking at um, our state test exam, but we're also looking at, at um, other types of data student surveys, parent surveys, um, the DECA survey, and we're compiling all of that information with student work product, teachers who are contributing lessons that work, and together we are targeting areas of need. But before we target areas of need, we look at what really has gone well in our schools prior to the pandemic, during the pandemic, and moving forward, and then we're looking towards next steps. What are some of the things that we need to do to make sure we're addressing these learning lags and moving our students forward? You know, one of the things I talk about all the time is my other son went away to college during the pandemic. And I was so surprised how many students, his friends, not him, because I would he wouldn't be able to home, but um, how many of them have or having such a hard time at college because there was a disruption to their flow of learning. It's not that they can't do it, they can do it. And that's what we say about our kids, they can do it, they can do anything. Um, but there's been this disruption of learning that we have to bring back. So because that disruption of learning is new, we're spending a lot of time researching, researching possible solutions. What are some of the things that we can do to help our students who can do it, but have had these instructions? Um, our focus is also on continued professional learning for our teachers around implementing the learning that our teachers have. I don't want my teachers to just sit there and learn. I want the learning for them to be meaningful, to help them get better at their practice, and that we give them opportunity to practice that. So the teachers that are here tonight, I just want you to know that, that that's what Dr. Gancona and I value. That is what we say to all of our, our building leaders. We support them in understanding the learning that has to happen, but we also believe that there has to be time for practice. I can't just say, do this, do this well, and do this and do this well tomorrow when you're learning today. Um, and that also means getting feedback from your building leaders but from them hearing the feedback from you, hence one of the reasons we're talking about teacher time, right? So last week, I did the state of the district address across all of our schools. Yes, did everybody see it? Right, we talked about what our areas of focus were going to be, and then your principal spoke about what that would look like in each individual school. And during teacher time on Friday, it would be my opportunity to hear from you. I'm really looking forward to that. That's my gathering feedback part. Okay. Um, so, from what we're seeing from our student data, we are doing a district wide focus on reading in two parts. Um, in our grades K to three, we're talking about learning to read. How can we get better? at supporting our students in learning to read. Um, for those of you who are parents in this room, many of you may have heard of Foundations and Hegarty. Those are our curricular, while well, Hegarty is our intervention part of our curricular foundations program. Um, but we also have teachers not just doing that curricular program, but they will be trained um, in a series called Letters. And what the letters talks about 
is training teachers to understand what a child's brain does when they're learning to read and how to recognize their response to when they see words, when they say words, when they speak sounds and say sounds, how they sound them out. Letters is a two-year training that we have invested in that is going to help 350 of our teachers in early childhood across the district gain a better understanding of not just doing foundations, which is a curriculum, but the teaching practices and the understanding of what that curriculum does and why. So we're really excited about that. Dr. Dan, what is that starting next couple of weeks? Yep. Um, in our three to five age group, we are going to make sure, remember the nationwide goal is that all students should be able to read on grade level by third grade. And we believe that our push in pre k to three around foundations with fidelity, integrity intervention, as well as letters is going to help get us there. Actually, the, the, the woman who created letters said that every child knows how to read. We just have to get better as teachers and understand that. And that is really our goal. And I am so excited about that. I just want to let everybody know that I'm going through that too. I'm a middle school teacher, right? So I am really excited. I mean, my kids are older, so maybe I'll save it for my grandkids, and I'll save it for when I come into classrooms and, and, and I'm able to support and give you guys feedback. But I am really excited about, for the first time in a long time, engaging in real learning about um, instructional practices that I can use to monitor what happens to children's brains as they're learning to read. So we're going to focus on the five pillars of reading. We're also going to engage in really knowing our students well and looking at those learning lags and providing MPSS services both in the classroom um, and outside the classroom so our students can catch up with some of the learning loss that they experienced because they weren't in public school during those K-3 grades. Um, and we also have a District L pilot, which is an intervention program for our students who are English language learners in grades four to five. Our district focus on grade six to eight is reading to learn, right? So our younger our younger students are going to be learning to read, and our six to eight are reading to learn. We're going to be focused on disciplinary literacy standards, particularly in ELA and social studies. We're going to be looking at close reading and interpretation of complex grade level text that is compelling and interesting to students. We are really going to be looking closely at and training our teachers in the types of text that you select to put in front of children in order to teach them to read, to learn. And then we're gonna to talk to them about providing access to get them there. It's going to be embedded in research, um, in writing, a study of nonfiction, and we're also gonna be providing MCSF structures, tier one through three, to support our learners who are struggling and performing outside the sphere of success. Um, our clear vision for leadership, all centers around the Chancellor's Four Pillars, as well as his big goals. Things like reimagining the student learning experience that we are doing together, making things more creative, more engaging, more interesting, using our, um, our beautiful city as a platform for learning. We're very excited that we are now able to open up trips again, and we intend to do that. Um, scaling and sustaining things that work. I'm really proud to say in District 25, there are so many things that we do well. We don't want to throw those out. We want to make sure that we continue to do that. Our focus on early childhood now and making sure that our students have access to take the regions in eighth grade is something we want to continue to do. But then we want to build upon the things that we think we need to do better, such as reading. Um, prioritizing wellness and its impact on student success, and as well as partnering with families. So tonight I am here with you. This is just one of many opportunities that you will have to partner with me. I'm modeling this for my lead I was like, who am Marissa? <laughs> I'm modeling this for my leaders. Um, and I want us to do things like continue to engage in our parent chats to go beyond, um, and especially now with technology, how can we reach teachers and students and families in a different way? How can we make those connections? For those of you who are parents here, 
You know what we're not using enough? St uh, teacher engagement time, parent engagement time. That happens once a week. Please make sure you know when your parent engagement time is. And it is a way for you to get in touch and communicate with your child's teacher once a week. I am so surprised at how many families don't know about this time or don't use this time. So please make sure you're calling your school's parent coordinator to get an understanding of that. Um, so one of the things that we did with all of our building leaders and in turn our building leaders then did with their teachers was we talked about chance with four pillars together as a community. We said, what did we hear the chance would say? What are some of the things that he said that are things that we need to focus on across the city? Um, and then we said, which I'm really proud of, what are we currently doing aligned to those pillars? And look at all these things. Um, the one area, maybe because it was last, but I don't think so. The one area that we want, want to hear more from you as parents and community leaders is different ways that we can partner with families. I think it's very important. Um, okay, so I'm coming to the end. I do need to do a big um, push for this and promote this. Um, is there any here having this set count if you're a parent? Yeah, it's nearly, I know, right? If you're in this. If you're Miss Neely, school, you have one, right? NISCA accounts are very important. I cannot stress it enough. If you do not have it, get in touch with us. We want to help you to make sure you got it. If you, you can also reach out to your child at your child's school, their parent coordinator, or their principal. They are building and deepening this portal. It will be a one-stop shop for families to have access to everything. You will see your child's grades test scores and more in my student. You can take classes in the citywide parent university that is directly coming from central and central's policies. Um, you can make reports for bullying. You can access forms such as your media consent form. You know the one that everybody chases after you. You can write online, special education recovery services, or request to identify parents on active duty in the armed forces is what they have right now, but they're adding to it. Um, and uh, it is, you can also reset your DOE account password or access support hub. So please make sure you open your NISCA account in the next few months. You're going to see the expansion and we're really excited about it. Okay, so I have three guiding questions up here tonight. You do not have to um, answer these three guiding questions. You can ask me any other question. But the three guiding questions for those of you who may not know what to ask or where to start, I ask you to think about what are we doing well as the district? What am I doing well as your superintendent? What are some of the things our leaders are doing well, our teachers? Um, what areas do you think we need to strengthen? And then what advice do you have for me? Um, if you don't want to speak out loud tonight um, during this meeting, you can email me at events at D25 at NYC, online at www.d25 at NYC backslash feedback. Okay, so here are the three questions. Um, so I am going to open the mic right now. Is there anyone who has any questions or comments for me? Oh, yay. Do you have a question? No? Your name's what? Carson. Hi, Carson. It's so very nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you too. Thank you. You're very welcome. What's your question, Carson? How can My I help? Question is, I like what you're saying. You do? Uh huh. Okay. Now you're going to be um, someone in the classroom who has to do that. What do you think about that? What grade are you in? I'm great. Okay. I'm in first. You're in first grade? No, I'm in, I'm in second grade. You're in second grade. 
So, so now that you know that you're going to be learning to read better, right? You need to hold us all accountable for that. So that's myself, Ms. Neely, your teachers, and anyone else here that helps you, your assistant principals who are here tonight. So if you struggle in any way or you need support, you make sure that you let us know, okay? Okay. All right, thank you, Carson. Really nice to meet you. Anyone else? I have a question. I wonder why nobody has any questions for me. Yeah, <laughs> me too, but it's good. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. I have two kiddos that come to the school, and I'm really happy that you guys are focusing on reading because the early pandemic and all this group are reading in K through third grade, they really struggled and they missed out on a lot, especially the kindergarten, the kindergartners and the first graders. Mm -hmm. They they were you know missing out on the fundamentals that they get in school when they were home being homeschooled or virtual and that's not the same. So they might I have a first grader and I'm sure she probably would have been with first one if the pandemic didn't happen. So she she's doing good, but she could be doing better. Thank you. And we're gonna try to try to tackle that. Um so I have two things. So first I'm assuming you speak to Miss Neely a lot because you call them kiddos, right? <laughs> so she has to call them kiddos all the time. <laughs> Because she's great. Because she's great. I start calling them kiddos too when I'm here. Um, but my second question to you, mom, is one of the things that we want to hear about is what do you think parents will need to support this work? Because one of the things that we know and that we truly believe in is the same thing with anything. Um, if our focus is on building reading, we can't only do it in school. So what are some of the resources or tools or supports that we should have ready for parents to be able to support them at home? Well, um, maybe the systems and the services that the school the teachers use, you can open it up maybe a link to the parent. They can extend it and use it at home. That makes sense. Yep. Thank you. Um, another thing besides reading, uh, the, uh, the foods that the kids will serve, what department takes care of that? Because I'm not best pleased about the food. My children aren't best pleased about the food. They're always complaining. It's cold, hungry, waffles in the morning, cold french fries in the afternoon. Last year they had, you know, spoiled stuff. And I'm not, I mean, I know I can pack their lunch, but if they get school lunch, they should be able to have a decent lunch that's going to energize and keep them going and be able to learn well with the, you know, nutrition meal. I agree. And that's that's part of our health and wellness initiative as well. Um, that is the Office of School Food. And one of the things that I can say is they are extremely responsive if we outreach to them. So Ms. Neely and I will make sure that we're doing that. I know that they would be happy to come here and speak to your parents. Anytime um, there is a concern from the Office of School Health, I mean, uh, Office of School Food, they respond right away to myself and to a principal. Um, there are also opportunities that they provide schools with where students can do tastings and they can actually self-select certain parts of their menus. So we can talk about that with Celia and, and having the Office of School Food uh, come and pay a little bit more attention to the service of food in, in uh, PS165. Thank you for that. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay. And I know that, that this, this parent, in fact, if you had your hand raised about things we could do for reading. Oh, yeah, no. I think that's a really good recommendation. I know that when my children were younger, my school trained me in foundations, right? Just the basic part of practicing foundations, um, uh, what word blends were, um, not the whole curriculum itself, because I think, you know, learning about decoding, unless parents are really interested in that, decoding and phonemic awareness might be a little bit complex. 
but what are some parts of the curriculum that you can do to practice at home? Um, I'm, I've also been speaking to principals around building a reading culture across their schools. And that means how we value and how we look at reading when students are in schools and how we can support that same reading culture at home. And that means supporting families with books, you know, online books, other types of materials that students can be reading and supporting parents um, in having access to that. So I know that that's something that Ms. Neely is working on. Um, and I know that there are already some resources available to families um, and we're gonna continue to build on, upon that. And Ms. Neely is certainly, you know, one of the, the things that I say is one of the reasons I selected her is because she's amazing, but also because I don't know if you know this, but she has a very strong literacy background. She was a literacy staff developer. Did anybody know that? Across the country. <laughs> so, so you have some really great resources to tap into here. <laughs> Great. Any other questions or comments? Um, I just had a quick question. I noticed one of the slides did reference, if I get the term right, special education recovery services. And I noticed that's something that we had in place for the last one to two years. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if that is going to continue in the same shape or form as it is here, or if it's going to look into something else because we are more back in school now than we were before, but we still have some recovery developed. So if you could just give us a little bit more on that area, um, I would love to hear it. So I like the word that you use warped because it has warped. Um, it is still available. Um, but it is driven by um, school teams that includes the parents especially in school annual reviews and or a parent can request a student review at any time. Um, and one of the parts of that discussion is to see if a child still would need those recovery services as part of the IEP meeting and that plan. Um, and uh, if so, then the child will still receive those services, but it won't be just a blanket offering, it will be individualized. Hi. Hi. Um, mine is more of a comment. I think it's really interesting what you said about your daughter um, working over the summer with some of the younger children because I know last year, as someone who works outside, or works with the children and helps them with, um, you know, acclimating back into school, it was really difficult for them to be together. And I think we do a really great job at utilizing our staff and utilizing our knowledge to help our students understand that. Being back together and being social is something that we're going to need to work on. And we're continuing to work on it. So I think it was really interesting to hear, even from a young person's perspective, how she saw that. Um, so I just want to say that we're working very hard on that as well. And I think we're doing a really good job. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm um, having me watch on the Dean of Climate and Culture. So that's how I know. <laughs> I feel a little lot. So, so a couple of things. I think one of the things that we have to get back to um, and something that I actually learned from some of the principals in this district, early childhood principals. Um, I was a middle school teacher and I didn't grow up with young kids in my family. So when I had little kiddos, <laughs> um, I had a really difficult time understanding play. Um, and now more than ever, I understand the value of play. And I think it's important that we get back to that. One of the things that I had to do, um, I remember speaking to one of my early childhood principals, and I spent a tremendous amount of time in kindergarten when my kids were younger, because I, I watched how teachers taught kids how to play. Um, and then I would go home and, and do that with my own children. So I think that's also an important thing that we need to consider for families too. Um, you know, there's a there's been a lot of family dynamics that have changed where you have kids who are home, you know, online learning and parents who are home online working. And how do we get back to understanding the whole concept of play? Um, I'm still trying to get my family back together to play board games from what we did during the pandemic and, you know, just spending different type of time together. So um, we are also really focusing on that in our early childhood um, uh, 
classrooms around what it means to play. Because that's where you learn a lot of these concepts of fairness, right? Of sharing, having fun. Um, and I think school should be that. School should be fun. You know, I'm talking to the adults about learning, and I think that's important that we need to know that learning is happening. But I think our kids should see school as a place that they love to come to and love to learn because it's fun and they're loved here. You know, so so I appreciate that. Um, you also, I love your your dean of culture, climate. I'm going to add wellness. Right, you should be in charge of school foods and helping out with that too, and making sure that we have wellness and healthy and safe eating. Yes, I love that. Um, but it reminds me to let all of our parents know that every single one of our schools have what's called a case team. And that team is a group of people that focus on school climate, culture, attendance, social emotional, thank you, social emotional learning. Um, and those are places where as we built these case teams over time, we were really learning about systems and structures and how to embed them. But I think it's time for schools that are ready, such as 165, to start getting parents to that. One of the things that um, we have been focusing on a lot as a district, and we know a lot of it is because of the pandem pandemic, and last year was really scary. Um, we've been focusing on chronic absenteeism and the impact that that has when students are not in school. I did, um, I will scroll off the table and hurt anybody. Um, I did uh, a, a presentation for families where we showed data and it is online on our district website for those of you that are interested. And what it referenced was the difference in student performance of students who are in school and students who are chronically absent. But what I learned from parents at the time is that parents did not know that students are still considered chronically absent, even if they, um, even if they're sick, right? So what chronically absent means is any time a student is not in school for 18 days or more across a year, and there have been studies for many years that really show about students' early childhood reading um, and the impact that chronic absenteeism has on that. Um, as well as students' ability to continue learning content from the time that they're absent in school. Um, September is Attendance Awareness Month. And Dr. D'Antona, I know you will know about what they say if you miss a certain amount of days in September. It sets the course for the year. And what is that? Oh, really? You don't know it? I knew you would know it. So can I get Ms. Come on, Ms. Longo, KC member. Yeah. So, so what everyone just needs to try to keep in contact is two days a month. Mm -hmm. After two days a month becomes equivalent to being trying to stop the year. Um, so at times you may not recognize that no, my child wasn't feeling feeling well today in terms of not feeling well they say long, but the accumulation of that over time, 18 days becomes why is accumulating pretty pretty quick and it becomes something that we might not even recognize as being your child being part of captain, but that's what it amounts to by the end of the year. If children wind up having that happen from kindergarten through eighth grade, it's equivalent to missing one full year of school. So it does impact greatly in terms of how uh, how our children are able to perform. Yeah. Time. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Dantona. Yeah. And what we say is um, District 25 does a lot of amazing things but we do need to uh, take a closer look together as a community on ways to reduce our chronic absenteeism and how we should support our families in, in making sure that our kids come to school. That does not mean, and I wanna be clear, um, as we emerge from the pandemic, we still need to be careful. That does not mean we should send our students to school sick. We should not do that. But those times that my daughter says she's tired, well, you know what, mommy's tired too. And I'm older than you, and you'll get over it. Get up and go to school, you know? <laughs> and it is those times that we say, um, you know, they're stressed. They need, a, you know, a, a, a mental health day. You know what? If your child needs a mental health day, you need to call your school's principal and I will, and uh, guidance counselor, I will make sure they get that 
that mental health day. They will get that time they need. They will get those breaks. They will have those fun, that fun, because social emotional work is just as important to us as academic work. So um, when you see those opportunities, when your child is asking for that break, just remind them that it's really important and that we want them at school every day. We want to see them. I have one last question. Um, are parents able to see the absentee, any kind of, like the race or anything from their child on the parent portal? I'm, I am not here. Yes. Yeah, okay. There's Lewis. Yes. Lewis will okay. answer that. Yeah. That's if you log into your child's Dix account, right? It's there every day. Yep. And the, and the past, the parent previous year. Yep. yep. Actually wanted to say that I and I can't speak for everyone else, but I feel like um, I feel like I am actually heard every time that I am here for a meeting, a situation, a whatever. So I really do applaud all the staff here. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, my son actually. My son actually went to pre-K and did the vote um, at an early childhood development where he decided I have a daughter that has nice So I couldn't necessarily send him in given all the support of the parents. And Miss Neely, oh my goodness, the first day of school last year, I swear to you, she was going to barricade herself between me and my child. And I felt awful. When I left, but honestly, it was one of like, you know, when I got here at the end of the day, I was so strong and I was stuck. And I was like, oh my God, every parent that I have, what do my child do? Like, oh my goodness, what do you do? You know, um, and it was really nice because I met the Edward, well, I met the Edward, um, you know, and everyone reached out and was like, okay, so he just kind of flipped out a little bit. Like kind of you know rolling and all of this other stuff. I mean, I'm just really emotional. And um, I remember thinking like, okay, it's the second day of school. Like, what is the rest of the year going to look? And like now he loves it. He can't wait to go to school. He's still a little scared. There's some very strange things that he's about. He's totally absolutely to the building. Um. So I just you know really wanted to say that I appreciate being. You know, like that is the biggest issue as a parent. You know, that your concerns are kept. I really do appreciate it. I love that. Thank you, Mom. And you know, that's very important to me too. And one of the things you'll hear my, um, I tell my principals all the time is I never felt welcome in my children's school. And because of that, as your superintendent, I always try to make that um, a priority for myself and for our building leaders. So it's really nice of you to say that, and, and we do appreciate the fact that you recognize that those are efforts that that we place in making sure our parents feel welcome and connected. So thank you. Brian. <laughs> Hi. Love bricks for kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We very traveling very important. As you know, we're traveled on several schools. It's actually quite a few schools of district, and the kids want to think about our baby. Oh, I'm not going to say that to everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they, they are amazing. Miss Needy, you know, he's just great. Everybody knows their respect. Sometimes I know how, how where she gets all the energy, you know. I don't need that. I know. Yeah. And <laughs> herself and her team are doing a phenomenal job in terms of uh, bringing all those programs and compare those programs. What is good for what is ready good for our kids? Which is great. 
and what they can get from it, you know. And, and we are very lucky that we have been with the institution for the last you know, seven years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not on the pandemic year. Again, you know, we 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 very hope we can now get connected to a bit more soon after the pandemic because it's a lot of us and uh, you know all the hands on fine learning things and uh, it's it's it, 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 yeah. Make sure you give your information and, and Marissa will give you my card too. Um Marissa, raise your hand so they know. Yes. Um yes. so she yes. does all that work with community organizations and and um, we, we think it's important now, especially as we're emerging from the pandemic, to make sure that we have all of the community opportunities that are available to our students. Of course, they would love to be in your uh, community center, you know, and, Thank uh, you. we're trying our best to keep all this uh, education, you know, hands on learning with the you know, STEM program for every school. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Neely, if you weren't hired, I would hire you after tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I know Mr. Lemma wanted to speak also. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Anthony Lemma. I work in the New York State Assembly. I represent Assembly Ms. Danny Weffern, but tonight I'm here with Assembly Ms. Danny Rosenblum, which is Ms. Danny Finley. But I have to tell you this. When I first met Ms. Neely, it was about how long she actually did you? Five, six years? Five, six. Five six years. My daughter was actually playing, and she teaches at this school. And the first thing I did was when she told me that the job was 165, I had to get that. And I was told, <laughs> I was told that this is a great school. A great school. It took me 10 minutes with the first meeting that I had with Mr. Lilly that I knew that this was a great school because it was a great administrator. And Andrea and Mariana, I mean, it's just amazing. The staff you have here and the faculty you have here, they are so loving. You walk into this school and you can see how much these teachers and everybody on staff, school secretaries, the cafeteria workers, how everybody on staff is into these kids and they love these kids. And I just love coming here. I was invited here this evening. Thank you, Principal Neely. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And it's very important. And I want the parents to understand that if you feel that the school needs something and they're getting a hard time getting it, I can tell you now, elected officials love hearing that you need something. You can call any one of your elected officials. You can call Assemblyman Rosenthal, State Senator Stavisky, who's a, who's a retired teacher, by the way. Uh, Councilman Gennaro and Congresswoman Ben, or myself, and we will make sure, and Principal Neely will attest to that, we will make sure you get everything you need. I also want to close with this. Leadership starts, great leadership goes to the top. And I can tell you, Superintendent Domingo, you're the best. And when they have the, this year, will the superintendents, as you know, have to apply for their jobs again? The tremendous support that Superintendent Domingo had from her faculty, from the parents, from the elected officials, from everybody in District 25, which is amazing. That we're glad to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad that you're here. Um, our elected officials are very, very good to us, and we're very excited to, to have an opportunity to work with them. But if you have a problem, you could always call me too. <laughs> Yeah, you call me first. No, um, they really do. They work so closely with our school, and we have so many amazing opportunities for our children because of the work our elected officials do and the values that they place on our school communities, as well as um, helping us move our initiatives and supports for our students. So I want to thank them and, and thank Ms. Dilemma for being here today. Because District 25 schools are the best. <laughs> Hi. Good 
really Yes, so I share in your um in in your question as well when I was a um when I was a young, um, when I had young children, one of the things that I could not understand was the way that they learned math. And I had my ideas of what math should look like. And I would sit and fight with my second grader around arrays. And I was like, what is an array? I had no idea I went to Catholic school. We did math a different way. Um, so there are many resources out there, but one that I know that we use in the community um, that a parent can use alongside their student is um, Dial a Teacher. Dial a Teacher is something that New York City, um, the United Federation of Teachers has teachers who work after school and you call, you give your name, you give your school, you give your subject and they, um, they go through, they, they have um, an awareness of the different curriculum that we do throughout New York City. Um, and they can help you with any type of question or supports that you have. Um, and we do know a lot of our students use that. Um, but Ms. Neal, I didn't know if there's anything additionally that you use uh, for parents. Yeah, well, I was done by second grade, just so you know, with math. I was done. I was on that dial a teacher and given this district. I was like, we're in district 25. <laughs> And so that we want to kind of find you for what's coming up so that we can say, look, it's set. And then you can contact the teacher and say, this unit two says blah, blah, blah. What do I need to do at home to support the children? Okay. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of tonight. Um, I hope you'll spread the word. Um, and tell other parents that next time I am in your neighborhood for a family event, um, that, um, that I would love to see more people. Um, and I want to thank all of you for being here. And um, I want to thank Ms. Neely and her assistant principals, as well as her staff for being here tonight. Thank you guys so much. And I am looking forward to an amazing year. I know that we have a lot of great things in store. So thank you all for being here.